G'day guys, welcome back to my channel, my name is Wildcard. Thank you for being here and watching my content. As always, it's my pleasure and privilege to talk about the greatest game in the world, Rugby. And yes, uh, Pool D, Japan versus Argentina. This was an elimination match. The winner goes through to play Wales. The loser is gonna be, uh, go home and play, I guess, play the Xbox if you have one. And uh, yes, it's uh, one of those games where, uh, kind of interesting in my opinion, because Japan has a... <laughs> New Zealand coach in Jamie Joseph, and Argentina has an Australian coach in Michael Checker, and both teams played the respective styles uh, of rugby that is from, from, the, from the coach's uh, nation, right? So Japan, uh, and so it was, it, was, it was like a very classic New Zealand versus Australian style with a lot of open play, with a lot of like, you know, offloads and, you know, you know quick decision making, sort of, sort of fast paced game style that we used to see between like the All Blacks and the and the Wallabies, you know, in the in the in the you know 20 years ago maybe. And uh, yeah, and that was a really incredibly entertaining match. Uh, both teams had really good discipline out of this game, so no one was giving out silly penalties. It was so highly and closely contested. Uh, and it was like just it, it was like, you know, you just, and like the, the 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 players are so dangerous. You were just waiting for something to happen and the scoreboard was just, you know, kind of like, you know, going back and forward between the two teams. Uh, I think Argentina had the lead for most of the times, but it was very Japan just hanging in there, keeping up the pace, uh, just with like very exciting style of rugby that was played uh, on the field. Lots of yeah, lots of really good open play. Uh, for Japan, I thought there was a, a couple questionable. Some of this kicking it was a little bit questionable, which led to there was actually two bad kicks. I would say kind of led leading into two of the tries. Uh, for Argentina, there was one where uh, it was like a high ball. I think it was Matsushima. And then he was just like, didn't really go anywhere. And he kicked it right down in the middle center of the field. And then Argentina got the ball, had way too much space to work with. And then just sort of like counterattacked. And then uh, Carreras, I think it was Carreras, that was ended up running into the in the try. And then the second one, Japan again, got a bit too, probably too New Zealand-like. They try to kick the ball, uh, basically like try to do a cross field kick from inside their own 22. Yeah, uh, that's like a very classic, New Zealand style of play, but this obviously it was almost like they wanted to do a crossfit kick, but they they also didn't want to do a crossfit kick, so the ball kind of went too far for the player to to to, to try to receive the crossfield. Uh, but it wasn't far enough to get themselves anywhere out of out of danger. Uh, so the ball basically landed uh, not that far out of the twenty two, and Argentina was in a great position, and then ended up uh, building that into a try. So yeah, some questionable kicking there from Japan, and once again, just like the previous matches. Japan was really well high speed for about 60 minutes and then the fatigue just kicks in and then yeah you can see that the Japanese team in the last maybe 15 probably less than 15 probably the last 10 minutes or so really like the fatigue the handling the mistakes starting to pile up uh players were just yeah out of the feet uh, on the field there for Japan uh, Argentina looked much more composed in the last few, last you know 10 minutes or so of the game both teams were tired but Japan had that consistent issue going into this game that we saw that against England we saw that almost Samoa putting on an upset against Japan in the last you know 10 minutes or so with a red card in the bin uh so yeah so again I thought the, the Japan Japanese team yeah look a little bit like you know maybe like there was you know this this, this could be a bit of a uh, fitness issue there for Japan towards the end and uh yeah there was one yellow card that was issued to Labuskahni the Japanese number seven. This is a very, I thought it was going to be a rare card and I'm very glad that wasn't. This was a identical, almost identical tackle that occurred between Japan and Fiji in the, uh, I, I talked about it in, in the channel, in the in the Pacific Nations Cup, I think it was. And, uh, or maybe, maybe it was the, the warm, I think it was the warm up matches actually. I, I should know it was the Pacific Nations Cup just before the warm up matches. And um, very similar, he goes in. In fact, he's in an identical body position, bent over, trying to make a tackle. He's a very tall guy. Uh, and his opposition kind of like stepped into him. Instead of running, drifting sideways, stepped into him. And then end up in a head collision. Very, like, yeah, very much identical to the, um, to, the, to, the, to the red card he received just before the Rugby World Cup, which saw him banned for three weeks. And uh, he, was, he almost didn't make the team. Uh, because of the ban, he was banned two weeks or five weeks. He was banned for for a bit, and he almost like didn't make the team. The the, the coaches almost was gonna just drop him. And uh, luckily, that this you know in that previous in that previous incident, uh, the TMO bunker wasn't in play, so 
referee had to issue a red card right on the spot. Uh, with this one, the team of Bunker looked at it and determined that the step by Gaggio, who was the, the loose air pro from Argentina, made it enough mitigating factor to for that to be um, to be a yellow card. So yeah, good to see that he wasn't again suspended for the identical tackle that happened not that long ago. Uh, really awesome to see the Argentinian fans singing their you know their their, their you know whatever singing their, their sporting songs. And it was really cool that when uh, Nicolas Sanchez gets on the field, it's going to like kick a penalty goal. And then like, it was literally like deafening, right? And the feel like of, uh, the, 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 the singing was going on. And then as soon as Sanchez gets through to take the kick, it just like completely silent. Like the party just completely stops. And then, um, yeah, Sanchez kicks a really nice 45, I think it was about 50 minute goal to kind of put the Argentinians out of reach, just like he did against... Uh, uh, well, who was it? Uh, against um, Samoa, actually. It was really, really nice to see. So let's have a look at some interesting stats out of this match. Three tries to Japan, five for Argentina. 461 run meters to Argentina, 531. So very close in terms of the run meters and carries as well. Uh, turnovers conceded. Japan was actually much better. Only conceded eight. Argentina conceded 15. Tackles made, 170 tackles for Japan. 121 for Argentina. 26 missed tackles for Japan. 29 for Argentina. Uh, the missed tackle count is probably a bit higher. The, in, in terms of percentage-wise, Argentina wants to get that down a little bit. Like, 29 missed tackles. Um, yeah, you probably have to be like 200 tackles made for 29 to be like an acceptable amount for this level of rugby. So definitely to polish that up. 29 kicks in play for Japan. Argentina, uh, 22. Like I said, neither team was really interested in playing the kicking game too much. Japan had to throw a few kicks out there, but I, I thought the, the accuracy for Japan... Uh, was a little bit low. Uh, there was a couple drop goals for Japan. There was one actually landed from 45 meters out by their, uh, I think it was their fullback? Who was it? Um, I think it was their fullback. Anyway. It, yeah, it was their fullback, Lemeki, who landed the, the drop goal from 45 meters out when they had a penalty advantage, which was a really impressive kick. Uh, from his part, uh, Emiliano Bofelli was a little bit rusty at start. He missed two goals right at the beginning. He missed a, a, a penalty and a, and a conversion. The penalty was much easier than the conversion. The conversion was from the sideline almost. Uh, but the penalty was, yeah, really should have got that one. He completely missed that from the beginning. Got a bit of nerves and then settled into him. Uh, Sanchez had to do one kick and he got that from very far out. Exactly what he was boarding to do. Uh, lineouts was okay for both teams. Um, I thought the set piece was decent for either of the teams. Scrum was fine as well. There wasn't too much of an issue for either teams uh, in terms of scrummaging. That's just pretty much steady uh, as he goes. Um, yeah, I didn't think it was, it was too much issue for either teams. Uh, ben O'Keefe was the referee. Six penalties to, to Japan, seven to Argentina, which is incredibly good for both teams. And uh, yeah, very nice flowy rugby. Like I said, one yellow card for Japan. So let's have, have a look at some of the Recap of the game, some of the some of the plays that happened. Where is my recap? Um. Anyway, I've got it here. The so the game started out a minute into the game. Chuckle Barris, the inside center from Argentina, gets like like a little short ball, and it looked like he was gonna get wrapped up, and then he just kind of like put his foot down and bust through like a defense, uh, bust through like uh, two defenders. Uh, no one was expecting this. He just went straight through. The fullback comes up to tackle him. He just steps in. Yeah, really just completely pumped after singing the national anthem, I guess. He was like on, you know, 200% adrenaline. Pumps through that. Uh, seven points to for Argentina immediately on the board. Uh, the game kind of starting to become a, a bit of an arm wrestle after this. It took 15 minutes for Japan to get themselves in a position. Again, there was uh, a, a Japan got the ball from, uh, from a kick and decided to go for a counterattack. A couple of faces later, they spread the ball out on the wing to Fakatawa, the big lock. He lumbers down the wing. You think he's going to get tackled. He chips the ball down the field. You're like, okay, I wonder where this is going. He runs down, catches the ball, and steps the fullback at the same time, right? Imagine that. He catches the ball and steps at the same time, and then just strolls in for the first try for Japan, seven points apiece. And it was just like one of the most amazing things. Like... He looked deceptively, like, he was actually quite fast, but because he's had such long strides, he actually looked really slow, just, like, lumbering down the sideline. Uh, but it was really, really awesome to see. 22 minutes into the game, again, the game was very tightly contested. Like, uh, like neither team was giving an inch. 22 minutes in, 
La Buscagni gets himself sent off. Uh, head, head collision with Gaggio. And suddenly, with a play in the bin, uh, Argentina was able to find a bit more space. Emiliano, Emiliano Bofelli goes for a penalty kick from this yellow card, and he misses this one. Yeah. Uh, 27 minutes into the game. Again, this is what I was talking about. The kicking game was probably a little bit lacking for Japan in terms of accuracy. There was a high ball right down the middle of the field. Uh, low pressure, Argentina. Uh, I think it was Malia uh, takes the ball, uh, kind of runs through a little gap, offloads to Bertrano, and then Bertrano runs through. Again, another offload to Carreras out on the wing, gets uh, another try. 17 points to 12. Miliano Buffelli misses another conversion. 33 minutes into the game, Argentina gets a penalty right in front of the goalpost after, you know, bouting the trial line a little bit. And uh, Argentina goes for the um, goes for the penalty, seventeen point uh, seven points to 15, 33 minutes. Uh, so yeah, Labus Labuschagne off the field, and Japan conceded eight points. Yeah, not very ideal. Could have been more than that if Bofelli kicked the conversion. Thirty seven minutes into the game, just before full time, just before half time. Sorry, Japan uh, gets himself back on the in the in the front foot, pounding the Argentina try line. Dylan Riley. Had two play, like there was like a like a nice little backdoor play to um uh what happened here? Yeah, there was a nice little dive, a little play from Dylan Riley, like little hands between them, and he gets looped behind, and then he throws the ball wide to Fafita, who's who's like running down the wing. He had a play on his outside, and then instead of throwing the pass, he kind of did a dummy and steps in field, and then uh and then as he's running in field, he links up with his support player. Uh, Saito, the number nine, and Japan goes in under the sticks. 14 points to 15 and a half time. Second half starts, Argentina came out with a bit more urgency, a bit more momentum, recognizing the, the, the dire situation at hand. Uh, a lot of very strong running from Argentina. Six minutes into the second half, so 46 minutes in. Choco Barris gets a short ball, and he basically just barged himself over the advantage line as he's getting tackled. He manages to pop the ball back, to uh to his outside center Lucio Sinti uh Sinti gets the ball with a bit of a momentum forward momentum throws a nice slight pass to uh Carreras again Matteo Carreras goes in for his second try uh 14, 14 points to 22 after this one you know Chaco Barris that little pop back was really 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 nice done 51 minutes into the game Japan looking a little bit tired like like you know they, they maybe you know the, the 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 starting team is really starting to wear out uh, Argentina gets caught a penalty for playing the ball on the ground and uh, Japan decides to kick three here I thought Japan probably should have just gone I, I, I personally I thought Japan I, I was expecting Japan to go for the the, the the try but they just went for the three yeah like obviously they yeah recognize like this is something they did in previous games where they they, they, they try to like just kick points towards the end of the game so they kick three here 17 points to 22 uh, a few minutes later Japan gets another penalty advantage, so 55 minutes, and this was 45 meters out, and then Lameki just does a drop goal, 45 minutes, and gets that one. Suddenly, the scoreboard looks a lot better, 20 points to 22 to Japan, 58 minutes into the game. Uh, there was a lot of nice play from, nice pressure from Argentina getting inside the Japan, Japanese 22, and the ball goes out to the blind side, and there was like a nice little like loop play, so there was like two, like, uh, what do you call it? Um... Uh, what I don't know, like like pass behind ball, like slip ball. What do you call it? Like yeah, two slip balls. So first player gets the ball, passes the guy behind him, and then another pass. That guy passes another guy that's looping behind him. So there was two back behind balls, looking like almost like a magic trick. And it was like a Malia as well who gets who got the second behind ball. He loops around and then throws the ball over the top to Emiliano Buffelli who goes in for the for the uh, for another try. Twenty points to twenty nine to Argentina. Uh, sixty two minutes in Japan gets another penalty and they recognize the dire situation. They can't just kick penalties for uh, for goals anymore. They go for the corner, they go for the line out and Japan had a massive overlap, three on one, Dylan Riley. All he had to do is throw the ball, man. Massive space out wide. He somehow uh, hits his head and runs in and got tackled. There was a penalty advantage for, uh, for not rolling away at the breakdown. So even though this try wasn't scored, uh, Japan went back for the penalty. They take a quick tap Michael Lynch crashing on center field. The ball comes out and it's almost like an exact replay from the try just missed out that could have been scored before. This time they throw the ball out to the wing and then uh, Naiku Bula goes in for the for the for the third try for Japan. Scoreboard 
ticks up to 27 points to 29, and then everything is super high in play. Five minutes later, 67 minutes into the game, again, uh, Japan kicking and kind of hurting them a little bit. They tried to do an exit from out of the 22. This was a typical All Blacks play, I guess. Crossfield kick from inside their own 22, but this wasn't exactly a crossfield kick. It was like a crossfield, but also I tried to get out of... Yeah, it was a bit too far. So it, was, it went out of the 22, and then Argentina gets the ball in a really nice commanding position to attack. Uh, building a few faces later, Martias Carrera gets the ball, and then he just... He had nothing in front of him, nothing going. There was no, like Nothing was happening. He just runs straight in to two defenders. He steps left, and then steps right, and just went zigged through this... Um, uh, kind of like zigzag through two defenders, and then immediately uh, he's free for another try. 27 points to 39. And then the, the game kind of really starting to hold to the grind. Japan fatigue really starting to look like it's it's starting to uh, to, to build on the players. A lot of little handling errors here and there. Nicolas Sanchez is on the field. 74 minutes. Uh, gets a penalty. Argentina gets a penalty. And Sanchez kick like a, what, like a 40 plus penalty for Argentina. And uh, in... in, in <laughs> Uh, and then and the party was happening on the field at that time. 27 points to 39. Last few minutes of the game, Japan was really throwing the kitchen sink at Argentina. But again, just like the execution, the polish is not there. Lots of like, just, yeah, you can see it very flat-footed. And there was a little mistakes here and there. Leading to Argentina, uh, turning the ball over. And then eventually closing out the game. 27 points to, 29, to 39 for Argentina. Yeah, let me know your thoughts about this game, guys. Really, really, really entertaining match. Uh, congratulations to Argentina. They will be playing Wales. And uh, I'm, uh, I, I fancy their chances against Wales, actually. So this will be exciting. And uh, Japan, uh, commiserations, but still very well done. Hanging in there all the way till the end. And uh, yeah, uh, let me know your thoughts on this uh, game, guys. Like, comment, subscribe. Thank you for watching my videos. And thanks to the guys who donate money to me. Subscribe to my Patreon and YouTube channel members, uh, I really do appreciate your support. And uh, yes, thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one. I'll see you guys later for the Fijian game. Cheers.